So tell me a little bit, what are the use cases people solving and kind of, you know, what's the, the, the smallest zookeeper and the biggest and kind of, yeah, sure. You know, what are the usage sure. patterns around that? Sure. So, so I think your question is like, what's Kafka for? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, so broadly, I guess there's two categories of things. One is uh, as a kind of data pipeline, like getting your data from place to place. Like you have to have some kind of feed of events to put into your Hadoop cluster, uh, feeding Elasticsearch, big Cassandra deployments, um, even uh, between applications. So, so this is kind of like a you know, mundane, I guess, but important role, which is just data pipeline. Mm -hmm. like you pour the data in one side and it flows out to everywhere else in the organization. Um, and the nice thing about Kafka for that use is um, you don't have to you don't have to think ahead of time where it's going. Right, mm -hmm. you kind of publish the data, and anybody else can kind of tap into it later. Subscribe, yeah. Yeah, the the second set of uses are really uh, for stream processing. So for building applications that you know respond to data in real time, mm -hmm. and those are much more varied. So in some sense, data pipelines are the same everywhere. Like every industry, every type of company, you know, it may vary in scale. Um, it may vary in what the contents of the data are, but it's basically the same. Mm -hmm. um, Stream processing is actually kind of exciting in that it's very, you know, it's very detailed and specific about the business. So in, in finance, it's all about you know detecting fraud and uh, real-time risk stuff and like all kinds of market data and market activities. In um, in retail, it's totally different. It's about retail stuff. It's about inventory and sales and pricing and whatever. Mm -hmm. And you see this uh, industry by industry, and it's really about you know taking a bunch of applications that ran maybe once a day in batch. Um, and making them much more real time, mm -hmm. and kind of the benefit of that, it really depends. It depends on um, you know whether there's any benefit for it being fresher or more real time. But it's actually very natural. I mean, there's very few businesses that are inherently batch. Like most mm -hmm. things, you know, data is generated throughout the day. Humans aren't necessarily batch, right? Yeah, humans tend to not be batch, right? Uh, and and um, and so that that. Uh, you know, I think this kind of like batch computing, uh, you know, it, it kind of comes naturally out of mainframes and you mm -hmm. submit your job and it's really kind of evolved and it, it makes sense and it's very robust and people have built a lot of valuable stuff around it. But um, but I think uh, in a world where more data is available as a stream, mm -hmm. I think you kind of naturally see this migration towards processing as mm -hmm. a stream. And that was, that was certainly what we saw at LinkedIn. Like we, um, when we started this project, we had, yeah, you know, those exact two goals. One was, you know, build a big data pipeline that would get data around, mm -hmm. and we knew we needed that. In fact, mm -hmm. we needed it very badly, and um, <clears throat> that was we were sure that bet would pay off. And the second bet was, uh, hey, right now we we really either build these kind of you know request response HTTP services, or we build you know batch processes that run once a day. Mm -hmm. But logically, you know, if we had a lot of data available as, and we have no data available as streams, but if we did have a bunch of data available as streams, we would probably process it in that way. And so that was more like a venture bet kind of. Mm -hmm. and, we, and so we thought, well, if we moved to Kafka and we had all this stuff as streams, there would probably be some use for that. And we weren't 100% sure what the use would be, but we had some ideas, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that bet actually paid off very well at LinkedIn. Like the, um, a whole ecosystem of, tools around operational monitoring, which mm -hmm. were really interesting. And we were not we had not predicted. That was not mm -hmm. that was not on the <laughs> that was not on the agenda. Um, a whole bunch of really interesting product use cases um, you know ended up getting heavily used in all the kind of news feed stuff of what's mm -hmm. happening in your network, the homepage for LinkedIn, it got used for the whole email system. Like email, LinkedIn sends a lot of email. <laughs> Maybe a little too much in some cases. Um, it's very heavily used in that domain. So, so kind of area by area, this kind of real time feed and applications that did stuff with that mm -hmm. became like really central to the business in a way that was really just a bet, mm -hmm. I guess, when we started. And that was probably one of the more exciting parts of it. Cool.